Peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we are going to be using this repositional 5x12 hoop and try to make a design with it in Inkscape and Inkstitch. So stick around and see how we do it. Five by seven hoop. Other than just size. The five by seven is the largest capacity that a brother SE 1900 can embroider in one take. And you can see there's two pin locations on a five by seven hoop, whereas the five by 12 hoop has four pin locations. So that's kind of the, the key difference. Your brother SE 1900 can embroider something this big, but you're just going to have to do it in a couple stages, if you will. So that's why they call it a repositional hoop, because you first position it on one side of it and then reposition to another side to finish the embroidery operation. What the issue that we have is Inkscape doesn't have it built in to do a, a reposition embroidery project. So we're going to have to play around with it today to see how we're going to break down our embroidery design into two parts and then kind of line it up appropriately on our machine when we get to the, the second stage of it. Uh, we know that there is software out there that does this for you, uh, like Hatch and the, the Brother software um, already has this built in so that you can break apart your design, but you gotta pay money for those and we're trying to use Inkscape to- Make it because just, we don't want to- Just try it, yeah, just, we just, are curious to see if we can do it in Inkscape. So we're going to try it and see what we come up with. Mm -hmm. So let's go. So we're going to start by creating our 5x12 template. And this is just going to show our work area that we're working with. So we get the right size on where we need it to be. Or show us our limitations. Mm -hmm. We're going to okay. type. Yeah, we're just going to do Project Anonymous and mm -hmm. pick some fonts and sizes, great. Mm, we're very indecisive, but this will take a while. <laughs> that looks pretty nice. I like how it's overlaying the yeah. cursive. So we made it caps. Because I, I think it just looks better capitalized in that typewriter font. Mm -hmm. That's going to be it right there. We're going to path, object to path. And then we'll do a params check. Shape's not valid. So we're going to go ahead and use something that one of you told us about. In extensions, there's a fill breaker part function and we should make it work so we're going to try this and it's working just like that So now we're going to select the half of the design that we're going to put in file one. So it's going to be like that. And we're going to save this as uh, our first file to embroider. Yeah. And then we'll come back and save the second half. Seems to be working. So now we just save it as part one. Or five by twelve, test one. And 
finally we'll go ahead and embroider it. And this should save it as 5x12 test 1, PES. Okay, we'll do a quick Command Z to undo that and select the second half, and we're going to call this five. Or we're going to save it as five by twelve, test two. And this will be our second embroidery file after we reposition the hoop. Yeah. Rams check to make sure it works. <laughs> A problem that we will face is because we separated those two files from each other, they aren't like aligned, so we're gonna have to manually align them ourselves to get them to like go right so it won't be like all messed up or anything like that. Yeah, unlike other programs where they will link the two files to each other so the machine knows where it's supposed to start, we will have to do that manually because these two files are completely independent of each other and there's really no way that we can find in Inkscape to tie the two together so that we can start off right where we need to. Uh -huh. So we're going to have to do that alignment ourselves, which is going to be difficult. To save thread in our test, we decided to change up our design real quick just to an outer uh, thin stroke and change that stroke to a dash line. So it's just going to give us uh, the, the outer edge of our letters because again, all we're doing is testing this out on some scrap fabric for uh, alignment purposes. Mm -hmm. Just so we have an idea of how we're supposed to align the sweater uh, when we get to it. Okay, so here's the tricky part. We're going to reposition the hoop to the other set of uh, pins. And now we're going to have to align part two of this design. Run our second file. And already it would be an issue because the Sewing is going this way when it needs to be like this. So we just quickly rotate that. Okay. And now it, you can see it's not in the right spot. There we go. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to first see where is the upper left hand corner because we can line this up with the bottom of the Y so that we know that this corner right here is going to sew right where it needs to be. So we're going to go ahead and click on this upper left hand button here. And you can see now it moves, but it's not in the right spot. So we do need to move that. But now we know that this is the spot on the sewing machine that it would start. So we're going to go back out and we're going to start moving it. All we've done, and again, this is the hard part of it, is we had to now move our design into the right spot to where it will correspond with our other part of the sewing. Mm -hmm. So that looks, if this is the upper left-hand corner, that is perfectly lined up where it needs to start. So now we can just go to embroider. Okay, and then we can go ahead and start. It's not perfect. perfect. Um, I think I can spend a little bit more time aligning. Oops. <laughs> you can see it's about a sixteenth of an inch too high. 
So next time when we get it on your sweater, we'll move it down. I think we should do another test on this. And since we just did a single stitch, it's gonna be fine. We can just go right over in a different color um, just so I can make sure I get all the spacing right mm -hmm. uh, because I do not want to mess or ruin your sweater. But we've proven you can do it. Yeah. It's just not perfect and, and we'll try to get it perfect. Not super convenient. It's kind no, of No, it's not convenient at all. Um, but if you just play around with uh, the move settings on your machine, you can get it to, to line up eventually. As long as your design is different objects. I don't even know how we would go about it if there wasn't spaces in between. Mm -hmm. Now that we have our 5x12 hoop, hoop around our hoodie, and we used which to is not, faster. yes, we did. It was not easy to hoop at all, but fun to try, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So this was our original design. It kind of turned it, the project was brown, but you want the project to be green now? Yes. Okay, so we're going to Okay, let's see which color goes first. So it's saying it's moss green first, but that's gonna be the brown now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Always make sure there's nothing underneath. So never leave your embroidery project unattended. What happened is this flipped in and got in between the top part of this little uh, embroidery foot and the needle. And it actually got sewn through. So we have to try to unstitch it very carefully. after a few bumps in a row, but it still looks pretty good. Yeah, we ended up being able to line it up just right. Uh, so it appears like we sewed it on straight and we successfully did a five by 12 hoop embroidery project. So let's see what it looks like outside the hoop. You just need to cut off the jump stitches. Let me see on your back real quick. Turn around. Oh, it's nice and I'm just happy that we got the two sides, the two separate files to line up just right. And it looks like it was one continuous sewn project, which is exactly what we wanted. So we'll clean it up and we'll put our logo on the front. And then we'll be done. Yeah, awesome. Some lessons we've learned. One being, use a test piece. 
Yes, if you're going to plan on using your 5x12 uh, repositional hoop with Inkscape, again, realizing that there is no connection between the two files, you have to physically line it up correctly. And we, in our first one, it didn't line up so great. Even though we were right on the stitch uh, where we wanted to be, we knew we had to adjust uh, by a sixteenth of an inch to get it just perfect on the second run and on our final run. So using a test piece is very helpful in getting it lined up perfectly. So another thing we've learned is probably the most important one. Don't leave your sewing machine unattended. Yes, so we walked away for a second and part of the sweater got sewn to itself yeah. around the, uh, the foot which is very bad. So mm -hmm. fortunately, we were able to pull out all those stitches and you really can't tell anymore. So, mm -hmm. but it's our lesson learned. We're gonna make sure, especially when embroidering smaller clothes to mm -hmm. stick around and make sure we're watching. <laughs> yeah. Our last lesson learned is that we would never really wanna do this procedure with a single object or something that had to match up or in line up um, and look seamless. Uh, text is very forgiving in that we could separate it out and, and make it line up just right. But if, if this was a single object, getting it to line up and be seamless, I'd imagine it would be very difficult and we don't plan on trying that, at least with Inkscape. Mm -hmm. If you have any tips for us on using the 5x12 hoop with Inkscape and Inkstitch, please comment down below and let us know. This was our first time doing it and it didn't seem very easy to us. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.